We now turn onto the Grand Parade. People of Cork, this market survived the famine, revolutions, wars, fire, and economic decline by adapting execution. They brought crafts like glass making, silversmithing, lace and linen making, bringing wealth to the city. This bohemian area has lanes like French Church Street, and you can see the Huguenot graveyard on Carey's Lane. As we turn onto Patrick Street, the building on the left with the round facade belonged to the Woodford Byrne Merchant family, 19th century importers of tea, coffee, fruit, wine and spices. While down the first side street on the left, you can glimpse... Although it was denied at the time, five acres of the city was destroyed. It was called the Burning of Cork. The maritime history of the city centre was... He really made his mark on Cork in the 1800s, but this project didn't run so smoothly. After much of the stonework had been completed and the church was partially roofed, stonework in 1853, and building essentially had to begin all over again. News of College Cork's largest building and home to the computer sciences, microelectronics, physiology and pharmacology departments with a specialist oh. cancer research unit. Almost unknown in the city at the time, like hot and cold running water, unsweet bathrooms. <laughs> Honoured him with this 1884, simply known by Corkonians as the statue. You can see the statue ahead and on your right, looking across the river to the hills and countryside. And shorter spires, so they are known locally as the Whiskey Spire and the Porter Spire. Porter is another word. Some of the smaller lanes are now incorporated into private property. But face it, this is the Catholic Cathedral here in the city. St. Finbar's Cathedral is Protestant, or Church of Ireland. London. The Big Ben is so big! <laughs> Shandon derives from the Gaelic name Shandun, meaning Old Fort. This area was once the site of a Norman castle and was a strategic area overlooking the walled city. This is our stop for St. Patrick's Quay. We are now on St. Patrick's Quay. The pedestrian bridge over the River Lee is the Mary Elms Bridge, dedicated in 2019 to the Cork woman who saved 200 Jewish children from certain death during World War II. She's known today as the Irish Oscar Schindler. The Mary Elms Bridge gives you pedestrian access to Merchants Quay and also to the city centre's bus station. In front of you, to the left, is the elegant triple-arched St. Patrick's Bridge, it is one of the 30 bridges or so, spanning both channels of the river within the city. Above the arches are carved figures of St. Patrick, St. Bridget, Neptune, and three... Rising for its 50th anniversary, the great train robbery was shot here in the 1970s with Sean Connery and Leslie Andrews. Left is the Catholic Church of St. Patrick. World-renowned Cork short story writer and novelist Frank O'Connor wrote about this church in its 140-foot spire is slightly crooked, and legend says the workmen fell out with the architect and did it out of spite. But more likely is that the fault was simply noticed too late to fix. Laurent Hardy and Charlie Chaplin grace its stage. Now it's a 650 seat theatre with a beautifully preserved ornate interior, presenting a varied programme of performances. 
On your right is the Metropole Hotel, built the same year as the Everland by the Musgrave family. The family were actually total abstainers, and the hotel didn't apply for an alcohol license until 1956. It has been the home of the annual Guinness Cork Jazz Festival since 1978, which was the first year of the October bank holiday in Ireland. Now thousands of jazz lovers from all over the world come to Cork each October. Five degrees, and cycling over the French Pyrenees more like a walk in the park. On your right is the Metropole Hotel, built the same year as the Everland, but at the junction. On your right is the. <laughs> We are now in what is known as Cork's Victorian Quarter in McCurtain Street, named to honour Thomas McCurtain, the first Republican Lord Mayor of Cork in 1920. Ahead, you will see the canopy of the. I can see the parking area. Yeah. There's a big mall. It's got MQ mall. This street was once known as Nelson's Key, and a plaque still survives from the 18th century, but it's now known as Parnell Place, named after Charles Stuart Parnell, the Irish politician and leader of the Home Rule League, who made great progress with it. Gives you ideal access on foot towards St. Finbar's Cathedral, which can be seen from there. We are now travelling along the banking and financial road of Cork, also known to the legal professions, the South Mall. Can you see how some of the doorways have steps leading up to them? This is left over from the time the Mall was a river, and these steps are evidence of former street-level boat houses. The Mall was one of the last streets to be covered up. Can you see a... Over to building to your right. These were called the assembly rooms where Victorians assembled to dance, and in 1896 it became Cork's first moving picture house for cinema. Cork's oldest hotel is on your left, the Imperial Hotel, dating back to 1813. Charles Dickens gave a reading here, Franz Liszt gave a piano recital here, and Michael Collins stayed here the night before he was killed in an ambush in Bailne Blanc, West Cork. The last building on the left is the former Provincial Bank of 1865. Over its windows, the coats of arms of many cities and towns of Ireland are carved into the upper facade. At roof level, carved panels portray industry, commerce, shipping and agriculture, while the heads over the lower windows represent the heads of the river gods. <laughs> Opposite is the older Cork Savings Bank, dating from 1879. The bank was overseen by both the Catholic and Protestant bishops as well as the mayor and sheriff of the city when savings banks for the poor were 